Okay, Chris Lipe here, and I exist on YouTube, anyway, to help you improve in your music. Better singing, better guitar playing, better recordings in general. I want to help you make great music. And lately on the channel, that's been a huge focus on vocals. So be sure to check out, if you're into improving your voice, be sure to check out some of the other videos on the channel. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, and in this video, I'm really excited about this because I've been getting a lot of questions about it. How do you discover your mixed voice? In case you're not familiar with what a mixed voice is, it's neither your chesty voice like I'm talking in, nor your falsetto as most people call it. It's, it's actually a blend, a mix, of both and it sounds powerful it increases your range a ton it helps you with articulation and it helps you really uh, to help to last longer and sing better without getting tired so being able to discover and efficiently use your mixed voice is a prerequisite I think to effective and long-lasting singing And before we dive in, which will be very soon, I want to encourage you that if you feel frustrated with your voice or you need to develop a solid foundation to discover what your voice can really do, join my free vocal course listed below. Like most of my videos, I'm not going to talk about body parts, I'm not going to talk about vocal anatomy, I'm going to present some sounds to you, some of those are going to come from my voice, some of them are going to come in this video from other examples that I've pulled, and our, your job in what I present is to internalize not only the, what you hear, but how it can feel in your own voice. And I'm going to give you some steps to move in that direction. But this is the way that I've found that is most beneficial when it comes to discovering an aspect of your singing voice. It's not about reading books. It's not about uh, learning about vocal anatomy, all that, although that can be interesting. It's about understanding how something sounds, analyzing that sound, and then internalizing the feel of it in your own voice. Even if it doesn't sound exactly like what you're hearing, internalize the feel of it and make it happen. And you'll discover all sorts of cool things about your voice that way. So keep an open mind as I'm making treacherous noises <laughs> and sharing examples with you. Most people who want to develop a mixed voice are those people wanting to sing higher and realizing they can't do it without this thing that they've heard called the mixed voice. But let's define it a little bit more, and then let's learn how to start feeling how to get there. And in order to do that, I'm going to present you with two musical examples you may have heard before. The first one is from Robert Plant. Robert Plant is probably the, well, he's one of the original mixed voice rock singers, and he gives a lot away when he sings, if you're knowing what to look for. And believe it or not, he gives most of that away when it comes to finding our mixed voice in his lower singing. I'm going to play something for you from the very end of Stairway to Heaven. If you've ever heard Robert Plant talk, he doesn't sound like that when he talks at all. He sounds like most men talk. But when he's singing in those notes, And she's buying a stairway to... It doesn't sound like that either. It doesn't sound like this dark, collected uh, sound. It sounds brighter. And Robert Plant, of course, when he sings way higher, you don't really think about it. He just always oh, really high. He sounds, he howls. Okay. But when he's singing low, he's still doing that. He's still, he's developed, and he probably just stumbled upon it. He's developed this habit of always singing in his mixed voice. That's what I'm hearing. 
let me extrapolate with my own noises. And she's buying a... Clearly, that is a very chesty sound. I can, al I can also hit it in full chest sound. No big deal. That's where we want to start when we're developing our mixed voice, with notes that we can hit in our chest resonance. And she's buying a... What I want to be doing is imitating what he's doing. Now, I'm not imitating him so that I can sound like Robert Plant. I'm imitating him so that I can discover something and then make it my own later. So, and, and, and he sounds much more like that. And he, she's buying a stairway to... And she's buying a stairway to... That sounds more like what Robert Plant is doing. So how do you get that sound? A lot of people have trouble even discovering that. And, and, and she's by. Well, the key is in vocal fry. And I've talked about vocal fry before. Uh, vocal fry is extremely valuable when you're experimenting with different sounds. Fry, fry. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to sing a note. And like that one. And, and then we're going to go to fry. And pay special attention to what you're doing in fry. How your throat feels. And then we're going to try to hold the pitch of that note. We're not going to slide down to fry, as we most of the time would when we're speaking. When we, when we, we're not going to slide down to fry. We're not going to do that. We're going to keep the the note the same but we're going to use the throat position of fry while we maintain that note ah, and it it does this bright weird sound ah, ah. now a lot of people stop there because they don't hear most of their uh favorite singers sounding like that and they go oh, that sounds nasal i don't want to sound nasal you gotta get the nasal the i don't want to sound nasal thing out of your head sound nasal. It won't be for long if you have an open mind. But I don't want you to ever say again, that sounds nasal. I don't want you to comment on anybody else's voice sounding nasal. I don't want you to say your voice sounds nasal. Be done with it. I'm off my high horse now. And uh, now we've got that very, very bright We'll call it the Robert Plant end of Stairway to Heaven sound because it's not way high. Now that we've got that, we're going to... Ah, we're going to push from here. And we're not going to go for any specific pitch, but we are going to push, once we have that tone, we're going to push up uh, with our support muscles. Ah, You're going to notice if you've got things positioned correctly, when you start to push up, you don't break. Let me say that again. You don't break. You are mixing your voices. You are eliminating your break. It sounds weird right now, but that's okay. Think about what you've discovered. The notes, if you're doing that, if you're able to push up like that, the notes that you're uh, hitting are quite high. And they're notes that you could only otherwise find or hit if you were ah! in your falsetto. Now, let me share with you another musical example. This is a very old Soundgarden song off their very first EP, uh, Screaming Life, and the song's called Little Joe. And... Cornell, this is, he's, he's much younger. He's singing, or shall I say, sort of speaking in this sort of mixed voice in one of the songs. And you can even hear him crack into a falsetto when he pronounces a certain vowel. And then if you listen to the full song, you can hear him go from this mixed voice-ish thing to what we know as, and, and come to expect in later Cornell career, you can you can start to hear that that grit that comes from inserting grit into your mixed voice but we have to understand when we're listening and when we're 
uh, starting our own journey of mixed voice, like everybody had a journey. When you listen to young Cornell doing this and you compare it with the Robert Plant and then you listen to what I'm doing, the pieces start to fall into place into how we're going to uh, discover and start implementing a mixed voice. So here's that sample. Is he going, little Joe, run for the bar? No, it's this, th it's thin. Little Joe, run for the border. Little Joe. And you can even hear on sticks, he, he uh, sticks and fire, or whatever he says. Little Joe, run for the border. Save your river, the mothers and father. It's this really thin sound. And it, it's exactly what the Robert Plant thing is. But he's not, uh, he's not going for a pitch, even. Right here was a huge revelation when I heard this song. That this is where he began. This is how he, he was playing with his range during that song at this very early EP. And there's so much to be learned from that. Little Joe! Little Joe! Let's, let's get there with, with the fry. Ah! Ah! It's a high it's a higher note. So you might have to start lower. Ah, 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 there it is, there it is. Ah, push, push. Ah, little Joe! Little Joe, run for the border! Now, as you push, now if you've watched my video on how to scream and be aggressive you can start applying some of what I talked about there, where if you feel yourself starting to break, push even harder, and it'll, it'll start to break up. Little Joe, run for the border! It'll st <laughs> you'll start to do some of that stuff. Now, the key to, to true pitch-filled aggressive singing is learning how to manage all of these elements together in a, in a way that, that gives you the desired sound. But let's not get off topic. Go watch that video for more of the screaming aggressive stuff. Let's go there again. Ah, little Joe, little Joe, little Joe, run for the border. Save yourself, save your mother and father. Little Joe. There it is. I've got a backing track pulled up here, and I'm going to use the words count me in as my experimental phrase. And I'm going to make some noise, just like I did, but in the context of music. And then I'm going to play around with those words and improvisational melodies with my voice using mixed voice. So you can hear the progression of how to get from pointless noise like we're making in, in this self-discovery stage to putting it into music.
Now, you notice during my singing that as I put it to music and as I started to push more, that there was some grit that naturally found its way into my voice, which is good, right? We want that aggressive sound. We don't want it to sound just like whining. We want it to have a bit more of a round tone. That takes some time, and more on that in another video. For now, take inspiration from the end of Stairway to Heaven, Robert Plant, and Little Joe, Chris Cornell, and the noises that I've made today, and see if you can start to find your mixed voice. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe to my free vocal course to take all this stuff even further and develop a solid foundation for your singing. And be sure to subscribe if you like what's going on on this channel. We'll see you for more.